Yeah, well, here's here's what we're gonna do, man. Um, we were just talking about this before we got on camera. So, okay. Um, we did Collision Records Spotlight Week recently, right? And uh, we spotlighted all the projects. But see what happened was what had happened was uh -huh. um, I typed happened? up a review for your project. But see, my computer had crashed. My computer's still not. You're gonna up. review it with me right here? No. Uh, Is that what, I mean, that would be awesome well, for me. I would love that. That'd be kind of cool. Can we? I like, I like hearing people. It keeps me because there's there's inev it's inevitably gonna be songs that you can't stand, right. and that helps me when I hear stuff. Like okay, that. O okay. So I want to deal with two songs in particular here. All right, Honest to God, um, which were you guys were being really honest on, and Conditional. Okay. Right, now I want to hit Conditional first. All right. Um, it seems like everything in that track comes together. There's some tracks, and I even say this in my reviews, there's some tracks that are just the perfect formula for me. Yeah. And it's just, I don't understand why I like it, but I just like it. Um, with Uncle Reese on the hook and everything. Yeah. The message behind Conditional, can you explain that briefly for people who may not have heard it? Um, it's, it's really based upon how Conditional, um, the way that we view each other, it's like this interview right now is conditioned upon the fact that I do rap music and that you guys like it. Because if I did rap music and you hated it, you wouldn't want to interview me. You know what I mean? And so that comes down to it. It's like my mother loves me for reasons. I mean, because I'm her son, but then <clears throat> she also loves me more for reasons because I didn't do certain things. You know, I didn't do this, that. Because I could have done a lot of things that make my mom hate me. You know what I mean? Or uh, people like my wife loves me. Um, you know, because I'm her husband, but then there's also other conditional things that are around that. Like, she'll love me in, in, in greater ways if I go out of my way to serve her, do something like that. Um, which, none of those things are bad, but they are all, like, visibly conditional. You know what I'm saying? Like, conditional love is not a bad thing. Because, I mean, it's love, right? Um, but when you have something like unconditional love, it's like, with all of the bad things, you know, with all of the, like, all of this might my bad music, you would still interview me. You know what I'm saying? That, that's this form of unconditional love. I don't know if I would go that far, but um, you know. So it's like you know, with 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 the, the point of the song is basically like people view each other in a conditional sense, like all the time, all the time. Um, regularly, it's a part of life. You just view each other in a conditional. Um, I'm trying to think of the word, but I can't think of it. So, and anyways, we view each other conditionally. Um, you know, you scratch my back, I scratch your back. You love me, I love you. Um, that's been instilled in us since we were children. Um, so, Christ doesn't view his children like that. You know what I mean? Um, uh, it's it's you know imputation. It's the great exchange, righteousness for uh, you know sin for righteousness, righteousness for sin. Um, and what that looks like is unconditional love and how deep of a theological thing that that is and how deep you can go into it, you know. But on the song, I scratch the surface, basically like, hey, you know, these people love me for this reason. These people love me for this reason. I love this person for this reason. Um, and then at the end of the song, I give a summation. It says, you know what? Like, Jesus loves me no matter what. Um, and as simple as a sentence as that is, it's like, it's true. So that's pretty much the song. So that's really yeah. I, that's what I got from it, and I was really blessed by it. just the way I could see that. I like when I can see music in my life, yeah. like directly look around and say, "These people love me for this reason. It's conditional. We know it's conditional, yeah. but there's a greater love, and that's the point." And I think that when you were at the end, you were kind of talking about, you know, why God loves us. Right. I think that was the point there. Now, honest to God, okay, it's your two label mates. Yeah. Is there any? Nervousness when you get on the track. Yes. Oh my god! <laughs> god. I just told you, man. I just feel so inferior whenever I'm in like conversations with them. You know, like it's it makes my like it'll make my week. Like Swoop texted me a couple days ago. I was like, man, I really appreciate the work you did on Honest to God, brother. This album is, you know, I, I just love it. And Chris, you know, a couple weeks after the album came out, Chris was like, man, I don't know how you did this. This is great. Um, and you know, coming from them, I'm like. I just don't. When I did We Live as Kings, I never met Swoop. You know, that was a, that was a, the guys who owned Collision. You know, knew about me. They had signed Swoop. They were they signed Chris. We Live as Kings was the the song that was supposed to go into the album. They were like, let's put these guys together. I was extra intimidated then. And honest to God, I was intimidated. So I was like, man, I just need to make sure that I'm coming. You know, as well as I can. Um, um, but also, um, that stuff humbles me, man, because you put songs in order. It's like, I just don't want to go after you. <laughs> I mean, or Chris for that matter. I mean, uh, 
Um, Chris has the multi-talented thing that's just intimidating in and of itself, but um, with Swoop, it's just scary, dog. Like, it's scary to be on stage with that dude, man. I feel like getting, your lunch is gonna get eaten. So you guys talked about the Blue Skies thing in that review. Dog, I was yeah. just like, I listened oh, to that dude's verse, I was like, well, Yep, I don't want to uh, be on this song anymore. <laughs> it was just crazy. It could be right like, after him. I'm like, well, just rewind, and rewind, and rewind. And rewind and it was like, oh man, it's everything. Terrible. Oh, man. Terrible now, work. Now, one, one challenge, one challenge. Okay. This is, I don't know if it's a challenge for me as much as I think it would be a challenge for a typical <laughs> Christian churchianity All right. that listens to your music on the song Dreams. Okay. You're sampling very popular hook from the time from the yeah. artist named The Game. Yeah. Um, for some people, that would seem to be a uh, conflict. Uh -huh. Not for me Why? personally. Uh, maybe because you're sampling something that's secular and it wasn't necessarily like you were saying something. Um, like, it, like you know, yeah. sometimes you have samples and it's like higher pitched or like kind of very subtle. Yeah. So for this, it was just like straight up. This like he was a feature. Yeah. yeah, like almost. Yeah. Like what? What? What motivated that? And why don't you see that as a problem? Because I think you're gonna say the same thing that I would say. Because it was dope. Yep. I mean, that's exactly that's, what I'm it, saying. it sounded great. And that's I feel exactly like the things that I said in the song were more controversial than the things that he said on the hook that was sampled more. You know, so if we want to talk about controversy, you know, I expected you to ask me something about some of the stuff I said, and then I was just gonna be like, all right, I gotta go. So, uh, you know, but with that, with, I mean, it just sounds good. It sounded good, and then it's really, at the end of the day, and I, hate, I gotta stop saying that. I think that's the first time I said it in this interview. In the way those interviews, I said it like 28 times, I counted. At the end of the wow. day, yes. I'm telling you, I'm so critical of myself, though. I'm very inarticulate, it bothers me. Um, it's, it sounded good, um, and really, um, Dirt, the guy who produced the song, did it. There was a mixtape called "Sometimes I Rhyme Slow," where it was the it was a game, it was a remix. I took him off the of verses and rapped on. So people think I did a song with him. I didn't. I got this off a of beat tape and then put the hook back on. Um, so I just started sounding good when I first heard it. And I was like, man, I'd like to do something like this. So that was really all it was. I didn't even think twice about it. I, I didn't think people would be offended by it. And if they were, it's something that I can apologize for. But I, I mean, I really. Um, Sorry, I don't know if I I'm want the type sorry. of yeah. It's like I don't even know if I want the type of people who would be offended by that to really listen to my stuff. Yeah, can I say that? Absolutely. So 100%. yeah, yeah. That's. I'm, I'm sorry, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> listen, we here's what we're what we're really gonna do. You you kind of just slice me when you were like, hey, you're gonna review it now, you know? But what we really want to do is we want to do a video review of this thing, and okay. um, and we want to really kind of go in, and, and because you know this. This is something that there's there's albums that you listen to, there's albums that you review, and there's albums you live with. Mm -hmm. This is something for me that I've lived with. That's cool. And seeing how you responded to things in a raw but theologically beautiful way has impacted me. And um, so for some people to be impacted by that, I want that. How do they get a hold of your music? How do they follow you? How do they keep in touch with you? Yeah. Uh, Collision-records.com and then Twitter is Alex Faith ATL, but I don't I don't tweet very much anymore. So it's just when you become a Christian rapper, people like your music. It scares you. The things that people say to you on Twitter. Wasn't it the first? <laughs> wasn't it? I don't mean to. So I deleted that mug. <laughs> wasn't it the first? The first day your your album came out, the day after, somebody on Twitter was jabbing y'all. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, it was. I was just looking like, oh come on oh, yeah. guys, like. He just I mean, got back that's in. That's what I'm saying. It's like I appreciate that in too, because I mean it, it balances out the people who will pedestal you for no good reason. You know what I mean? Um, so you get guys who just hate your guts for, for no good reason, and then you get guys who think you're the best thing ever, you're the most godly man ever for no good reason. Um, they don't know you from a can of paint to hate you or to love you. And so you get all sides of that thing on Twitter. That's why I just hate social networking. I think that's a perfect way to end, don't, don't you? Like, I think that's a perfect that way to end. Man, I, this has been like real talk. This has been like the most fun I've had interviewing anyone. Yeah, man. Ever. Hey, um, it's just been fun. It's been cool to hear your honesty and be shocked by some of the things that you say. So I was preparing. I was preparing for you to say some off the wall stuff. Hey, man. You said it. But man, you just yeah. Yeah. Alex Faith. I really appreciate you. Man, brother. I appreciate you, Thank and you I appreciate guys, what man. you guys are doing in the collision. Hey, the antidote TV thing. I was like, really, really, like. For real, it's like that's that's pretty deep. I don't know anything about Antidote TV. I don't know anything about Christian rap. 
um, radio DJs. The only DJ I knew was Wado. I didn't know anything about vlogs. Um, I knew about Rapzilla because I went there to download people's stuff. Um, but, you know, I didn't, I mean, so I'm still getting introduced to all of the different outlets. And so I definitely, I think you guys have a tight site. Yeah, sense. man, we just want to create a crowd around good art yeah. and uh, lift it up and say, hey, like, reflect the, the light of the Savior, reflect the light of the gospel by listening to this art. Cool, man. So, as I always say, this has been your host, Tyler Burns, and you've just been handed the antidote, but it's up to you what you do with it. Peace. That was a really cool oh, exit, though. Trendy guy at all. Right. I just, yeah, I'm extra average, bro. I don't have any, I don't know, man. I wish I was cool like that, but I'm not. It's like, man, this is good for people to see you and you talk to people. I was like, who, who am I talking to, bro? He's like, well, man, you just gotta, come on, dog.